Oh, Gideon, no! How are you gonna paralyze the full engine ass? Hey guys and gals, how's it going? If you're new to the channel or not subscribed, hey, what's up? I'm Tyreza. If you're returning to the channel and are subscribed, yo, what's up, friend? How's it been? There's your personal extra greeting for being subbed. Welcome to the channel, where we talk all things Monster Hunter with a current focus on Monster Hunter World. Today, we're talking about the greatest weapon in all of Monster Hunter history. This is 100% facts and cannot be argued with. But what is the greatest weapon in Monster Hunter history? Why, it's only one of the least used weapons in the game. Behold, this is the best weapon in Monster Hunter World. The Sword and Shield, unparalleled in everything. This is undoubtedly my favorite weapon in all of Monster Hunter and in Monster Hunter World. This weapon has just seen so much growth over the years and starting with Monster Hunter 1, I played this weapon. Now, while it wasn't that great back in the day and throughout a lot of the series and it's very, it's, it's very underpicked weapon, but I believe this is the most underrated weapon. This is the main character weapon. If you're not talking about great sword on the cover arts of the games and all that, this sword has been around since Monster Hunter 1 and it really deserves a lot more respect on its name. This weapon is capable of doing so much of what all the other weapons can. It has some of the easiest combos in the game, uh, it has stun potential, you can launch yourself into the air without terrain, you can get lots of mount damage. Because it's a quick hitting weapon, you can build up elemental damage and status ailments very quickly on monsters. You can even use items while running around, making it kind of a support weapon with the right, the right setup and skills and mantles. And not to mention, this this weapon is honestly just one of the funnest weapons in the game. Not only with being able to change your combo on the fly whenever you want, not being barred from the direction you're facing or anything like that, they made this weapon just like the jack of all trades, master of none, you know? And if you really do want to take your damage to another level, the back step into the true rush combo is, is just phenomenal. And not only all of that, but even with the true rush combo, you have Something that can be very fun with timing the uh, the slashes with the charges and all that, but it also takes your damage up to another level if you really do want to min-max it and go full sweat mode on this weapon or in this game. This weapon may seem like um, not many people's pick, I guess. Everybody would rather use another weapon, I guess, um, like the great sword or a long sword, um, even the switch axe and the charge blade. They may all seem a lot more interesting than this weapon. This weapon's the closest thing to real life, wielding an actual sword that you probably could wield in real life. Okay, let's face it, this thing actually still looks really heavy. <laughs> no, but a sword and shield is the most standard thing you can get to real life, come to think of it. Otherwise, you know, the hunters in this game are wielding Giant lances, gun lances even, the switch axe like I said. And then right here we got the sword and shield. The most standard basic weapon of all is actually the funnest and greatest weapon in Monster Hunter World. You can fight me on that. I love this weapon and I will never stop using this weapon. But get your long swords out of here. Okay, I, I like long sword too actually. I like a lot of the weapons in Monster Hunter World. It's actually why I'm still playing World. I, I just love the feel of this game. But that's enough of why the sword and shield is so great, but now let's go to the training ground and show how it does all the things that I claim. We'll go over mostly everything, 95% of it, and then we'll take it into an actual battle against a monster to show it all off together. Follow me. All right, so starting off, we have the bread and butter combo of the sword and shield. Well, maybe not bread and butter, but it's the easiest combo to pull off by far. Triangle, 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 triangle. Or if you're on Xbox, I'm uh, thinking it's Y, 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 or if you're using an Xbox controller. Um, this combo has been around since, I believe, Monster Hunter 1, uh, more or less. Might have changed a little bit here and there through the years, but um, this is still a great normal combo to be doing. Next up, I want to talk about uh, the circle combo. It says powerful combo on the left. Uh, note, I, I actually don't need any of this notation. Um, Sword and Shield is actually my main weapon, or it's my best weapon. Um, but uh, for the sake of this video, we're gonna leave it on the screen. So um, this combo right here, it goes lateral slash, return stroke, round slash. This is actually one of your best damage uh, options when you're um, not uh, going for some of the trickier stuff with Sword and Shield. So uh, a basic combo would be finishing off your triangle with this if you had all the time. So what is nice about the sword and shield is that the shield actually acts as a weapon too. 
You have a shield bash combo if you uh, hold forward on the stick and press circle in any direction. This has the added benefit of uh, stun damage or uh, knockout buildup. It doesn't have the best stun capability, but if you have a hammer or a hunting horn user on your team, I try to use this as much as possible. The little stuff does add up in the end. So with the basics in mind, I want to talk about what is so great about the Sword and Shield in Monster Hunter World specifically, compared to the other game. Monster Hunter has always been known for stiff, tight direction and uh, control and movement and recognizing monsters' patterns and using your own weapons movements to uh, evade and whatnot. But what's great about this game is the Sword and Shield can change its direction on the fly. Even if you're faced this way, you can literally turn around and slash the other way. What's great about this is that actually it can be chained indefinitely. Now the reason why this is so useful is that, well, many people will argue that it doesn't deal good damage, but who cares? This is the best edition of the Sword and Shield by far, hands down. I love the Sword and Shield Monster Hunter World specifically for this. Because I know that no matter what direction I'm facing, I can always face the direction I need to if the monster switches up its position. Not only is this crucial to Sword and Shield's play, but it actually, uh, I, in my opinion, this weapon boasts the best directional excellency in the game. Now, another thing about the Sword and Shield is that you can chain basically anything together. This weapon allows for limitless combos in the end of the day. So we really can combo anything together. We can go triangle, 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 circle, circle, circle. But what's uh, great is that we can cancel in the middle. And due to the directional mobility of the Sword and Shield, we really can just keep an infinite combo going if you're underneath the monster's legs and whatnot. I don't know, I think this is just like the funnest part of the Sword and Shield in this game, like, hands down. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about getting into some of these combos, actually. When you unsheath your weapon, triangle, Huh. So this is known as the advancing slash. This is probably your best movement out of uh, non-combat. So if you're heading right into combat, just unsheath. Hmm. Pressing triangle and circle while you have the weapon unsheathed will also activate this. But this is one of your best ways to get in very quickly. Also goes straight into a short shield bash, which you can combo into the normal shield bash. giving you a four hit shield bash combo, which is awesome for stun. What's also useful about this attack is that if you do it into cliffs or climbable things, you will launch yourself into the air, which you can then do uh, another attack out of for a jumping slash. This is really great for mounting damage, especially because it counts as two attacks. You can also roll off for one slash. This also holds true on the uh, hill right here, or a slope. So your advancing slash actually turns into a two-hit combo to chop the monster's legs and stuff. What's nice about this is you can kind of just mash triangle or circle to go into your jumping slash combo. And then actually, let me just test it with circle too. Yeah, the triangle or circle will lend you to that. Especially for fighting a big monster sliding down this hill, you can get a lot of mounting damage uh, just by kind of climbing up the hill and retreating a little bit. Getting into some more advanced things, um, go down, back down the hill. One of the best things the sword and shield can also do is called the backstep maneuver. This move has iframes. Um, Your character will do a little backstep and will automatically advancing slash toward the monster if you don't press anything. So right here, I'm just gonna do a two hit combo into backstep. You can actually see on the combo at the top, it says backstep and then advancing slash is just forward. Um, I, that's not a button press or anything. I'm not even pressing forward with my left stick. This also function as a kind of like a charge move for the sword and shield, which is also introduced in Monster Hunter World, I believe. If you hold circle, that is and it'll launch your character up into the air. So not only so far does the Sword and Shield possess great combos, great combo versatility, great evasion, great movement, shielding capabilities, mounting damage, but you can also launch your hunter into the air at any moment without the use of terrain. The quickest way to do this, uh, and this is probably my most favorite, um, because I feel like I can target the monster's head or whatever I want to target very well, is I'll do an advancing slash straight into the back step. So like this. 
Now the enders for this are uh, actually kind of interesting. Most of the time you're gonna be wanting to do your strong attack, which will lead into a, a shield bash. This actually used to be the best damage for the Sword and Shield pre-Iceborne. I believe we got the perfect rush in uh, Iceborne anyways, but we're not talking about that yet. But what's interesting about this is the Shield Bash, like I said, does the most damage and also has stun capability. You mostly want to be using this attack over uh, the other option, which is Triangle. But this, this option right here is also just one of the coolest looking attacks. <laughs> you can really feel your counter come down. Your camera even moves to make it more cinematic, kind of like the Longsword's Helmbreaker. Very cool attack. This is honestly my favorite attack in the game. If it, if it isn't your favorite, then I don't know what's wrong with you. This weapon is sick. Ugh. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so talking about the Triangle Slash, the Falling Slash, um, I believe this is only useful for one thing and one thing only is uh, you get mount damage off of this. I'm pretty sure that's it. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, you know, you want to do the shield bash most of the time, especially if you're hitting the monster's head. Paired with something like the glider mantle, um, it's very effective for getting mounts. When I'm playing sword and shield, I usually get three or four mounts on a large monster for my teammates. Sword and shield is great at everything, and so you really can pair it with all kinds of mantles. But like I said, you can do the uh, back step out of anything. So that's my favorite quick one. But you can even roll and back step. All right, let's get into what Iceborne added to this weapon. Okay, so the final option out of the back step is called the uh, Perfect Rush. So if we get a back step right here, when you're charging the, the with the sword and shield right here, right there, if you just let it do its thing, you'll go automatically into that charge slash. But if you actually press triangle while it's charging, you'll actually go into what's called the Perfect Rush. And you see our character flashes with power right there. So what's nice about this is you can mash triangle and get a whole flurry of attacks. Very cool. But what makes this move the arguably one of the funnest moves in the game is that um, if you play it like a rhythm game and time your charges, uh, you'll actually get way more damage. Your character will flash and you have to press triangle at the right moment, like this. Right there. Right here. Oop. Okay, I messed up. All right, one more time. One more time. Uh. Huh. 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 It's actually kind of lenient on the timing. I feel like you fail it most of the time if you do it too quickly. Is what it is actually. It's not too bad, and once you get the hang of it, it's probably one of the funnest combos to do in the game. Okay, I messed it up right there too. All right, let's talk about something else it can do, actually. Like how we were talking about versatility with the combos that this thing can do, with limitless combos virtually. It, it even applies to the perfect rush. So like this, we don't have to do the final slash in it or the stab. You can actually do part one, part two, and then roll out and do it again. Roll out, back step, perfect rush. So we're not even through the whole video, but you can see just how much this weapon is capable of. It can do like virtually 90% of what all the other weapons can do in the game. Well, I mean, uh, save for ranged weapons probably and explosive stuff like the um, gun lance and stuff. But this thing has stun capability. You can launch yourself into the air for mounting damage at any time without terrain. Um, this actually has iframes on it. You can change your direction at any time. Oh, another thing too. You can use items while you have the weapon. Now, if you hold shield and you press square. Okay, well, I'm not thirsty right now, I guess. Yeah, sure, Mega Barrel Bomb, why not? <laughs> so, so, like, you're shielding, right? You can... Huh. And guess what? You still have your weapon out. Now, obviously, this doesn't seem very useful, um, especially when you look at the sheath of this weapon. Very quick, huh? I'm not even kidding. Uh, I don't... Actually, do I not? Yeah, I, I believe I don't have any quick sheath skill at all. 
Yeah, no, I don't have anything like that. This weapon is just that fast with the sheath and unsheath animation. But it's very useful if you're running around and you're using uh, more of a support build with like wide range for your teammates and speed eating. You can just drink potions on the fly, especially um, with the chance of blocking. So you can wait and wait for a monster to make an attack and maybe it doesn't come for you or maybe um, it misses you slightly. And then, bam, even while I'm running, I can quickly press shield and press square right away to drink a potion. And it'll count as a running potion. See? Very cool stuff, in my opinion. All right, let's get into um, what was one of the best damaging moves in the game, actually. Wait, hold on. Ah! Oh, peak performance wore off. Actually, that's okay. So one of the best damage moves in the game, um, well, pre-Iceborne anyways, still very good. So if you do an advancing slash into anything that is uh, runnable, I guess, or like uh, any wall that you can run up, you'll actually get a move called the Helmbreaker. Very cool attack. Um, this move looks like it should do one single big stab, but in reality it actually does a lot of mini little stabs that, um, do a ton of mount damage. Okay, I might not be able to show you on this post. Is there really no good place to do this at on this post? Do I need to change the, uh, scenario? Let me go check. Alright, let's see if this reaches. Ah, there's no way, dude. Oh, man. Okay, um, well, I, you know what's funny is I wanted to do a, um, I wanted to wrap this all up in a monster fight later anyway, so I'll show you that. So the addition of the Slinger in Monster Hunter World has proven, I, I believe, widely successful. Lots of people like the Slinger. The Sword and Shield can um, hold uh, the left trigger at any moment to fire from the Slinger while it's out. While maintaining the normal movement speed of a, a, a faster weapon. Now, what is cool about this is actually you can go into a different mode called Slinger Burst Aim at the top right, you see. If I click in the right stick, We'll open the slinger up a little more. You can kind of see it underneath the button prompts. What is nice about the slinger burst aiming is that it'll always stay active even when you go out of it. So right now we're not in it. We'll activate it. We can run around. But you see it's still actually in that mode. So if we aim right now, we're still going to be in that, which is very, very nice. Your character kind of does a strafing movement while you do this. I'm not sure um, the idea there. Very cool, though, actually. <laughs> I don't do this enough. So if we Slinger Burst, we can actually Leaping Slash for a perfect rush right out of that. I don't know if it's too useful, honestly, but um, very cool. To have a move that can just get you right into it. Kind of like the True Charge Slash on the Great Sword with the Slinger Burst. Very fun. Well, I think that's about everything for as far as the combos go with this weapon. I guess the only thing to do is to take it for a test run and show you guys the true potential of this weapon. I guess, uh, let's go give it a shot. God, Gideon, how do you always get here first? I don't understand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a Fulger Anjanath up on deck today. Uh, Master Rank, I didn't really want to fight a Fulger Anjanath with this weapon to test it out. But I'm going to show you guys the uh, power of the sword and shield, and so I thought a difficult fight might be uh, more interesting. Well, it's not the most difficult fight, I guess, but it's been a very long time since I fought this boy. Okay, so I have Impact Mantle and Glider Mantle, so this should actually be great. Also, who am I kidding? I have, like, Divine Blessing level 5, so I'll be fine against this dude. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Don't look over here, guys. What? You did not see me. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we got these twigs right here. And just like that, I'm out. I don't dodge on this. I just keep attacking until the monster staggers. Oh, also that gets you some stun damage right there, which is pretty nice. Also, the mobility of this thing is just nice. And just like that, another mount. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, no, no! Oh, Gideon, no! How are you gonna paralyze the full engine ass? Bro! Good kitty. Dang, he's beating his ass! Dude, I've <laughs> had to have cut this guy's eyes out by now, right? 
What? How is he still up? What is going on? This is the longest mount I've ever had. This is nuts. What? All right, two rush time. <laughs> See right there, the shield isn't the best in most situations, but right there it can be very good. It's kind of like a last, uh, oh shit. Kind of like a last resort kind of thing. It's nice as you can pull it out right away with your right trigger. Actually, I'm getting a lot of great shield uses out of this thing. Come here, buddy. Oh, sorry. All right, min-max time. And we're back by the handle now. Oh, wait, where is it? Oh, oh. Quick, quick. No! Really? Ah, oh, come on, man. Ooh. And there's the knockout, ladies and gentlemen. And just like that, I didn't actually have to sheathe my weapon because that's my radial dial. It's technically an item. And right now we're going to do glider mantle because we want to try to get good mounting damage. Man, another stun on this guy. This is nuts, Gideon. Oh, uh, uh. Is Gideon tanking for me? That move is so cool. Alright, so we should probably do the Helm Breaker if we want to get the good move. Huh. Oh, what? I didn't know that could happen. And there we have it. A uh, third now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh. Uh, huh. Oh, you guys know what time it is. cinematic but there you have it guys and gals a sword and shield in all its glory against uh well a somewhat tough monster i guess engineath isn't the strongest obviously but um i feel like that was still a very fun uh showcase well guys and gals that's gonna do it for today sword and shield is one of my favorite weapons and i wanted to give it the respect it deserves hope you enjoyed the video if you did consider leaving a like or a sub it really goes a long way i'm not really one of the big monster hunter content creators but i'd like to be someday Either way, I appreciate all your support. What's your favorite weapon in Monster Hunter World? Would you like to see a video done on that weapon? Please let me know in the comments down below. I read each and every one of them and I take them all into consideration for my future content. That being said, this has been Terroriza and I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Peace!